This is continuity of our discussion on complex functions. So far, we have defined what are complex functions. So a complex function is the rule with the help of which each complex number from the domain is assigned to a unique complex number. Now, if we want to do calculations with complex functions, for example, if I want to calculate what are the images uh, under some function of a complex number, or if I want to explore further properties, the continuity, limit, derivatives, and other properties of complex function, then we need to have some very precise descriptions of these complex functions. Now we know that any complex number can be written as x plus iota y, where x and y are real numbers and iota is square root of minus 1. So when we apply function on a complex number x plus iota y, then we get another complex number, let's say u plus iota v. So we can say that the complex number can be written in the following form. So f applied on this x plus iota y is equal to u plus iota v. Now the point is, whenever I change x and y, the values of u and v will be changed. So we can say that these u and v's are in fact functions of x and y. So we can write down the function in the following form, u of x, y, because this u varies when you change the values of x and y. And similarly, the v varies as we change the values of x and y. So we can say that a complex function is basically w is equal to f of z is equal to u of x, y plus out of v of x, y. Now here, once again, this u and v are real valued functions and the input of this function is basically x and y. Now, uh, let's consider in particular a function uh, conjugate of z multiplied by real value of z plus z square plus imaginary value of imaginary part of z. Now, let's try to write down this function in the form u of x, y plus out of v of x, y. Now, in the first step, we write down the values of z conjugate, the real value, the real part of z is basically x and z square, in other words, x plus iota y square plus the imaginary part of z, which is y. And we can simplify this thing. So opening this square, we get x square plus iota square y square. Now iota square is minus 1 plus 2 iota xy plus y. And simplifying further, we get 2x square minus y square plus y plus out of xy. Now this is the real part of the output. So in other words, we can say this is u of xy and this is the imaginary part. So we can say that this is v of xy. So that's how we can write down this function as u of xy plus out of v of xy. Now, Conversely, if we are given a function in the form u of xy plus out of v of xy, then we can write it down as a function involving only variables z and z conjugate. So how to do that? So for that, uh, we need to observe that x is equal to z plus conjugate of z divided by 2 and y is equal to z minus conjugate of z divided by 2 iota. Now, it is very simple to see why this is true because if z is equal to x plus iota y, then conjugate of z is basically x minus iota y. Now, if we add them, so z plus conjugate of z becomes 2x and iota y and iota y will be cancelled out. So, this implies that x is equal to z plus z conjugate divided by 2. Similarly, we can observe that y is equal to z minus conjugate of z divided by 2 iota. Now, using these two expressions, we can convert any function which is given in the form u plus iota v. We can convert it into a function involving only variable z and z conjugate. So, how to do that? Let's consider another example where we have uh, 
function given in the form 4x square plus i out of 4y square. Now, of course, here u of x, y is 4x square and v of x, y is 4y square. How to write down this function in terms of uh, uh, a function that involves only z and z conjugate? So, for that, uh, the idea is very simple. Just use the value of x is equal to z plus z conjugate by 2. So, if it's 4x square, so it becomes 4. So, replace x with z plus z bar divided by 2 square plus iota and replace this y with z minus z conjugate divided by 2 iota. Now, in the next step, we can just simplify it. So, simplifying them, so this 4 will be cancelled out this 2 and this 4 will be cancelled out this 2 square and uh, simplifying further, we get this expression. Hence, the function was given in the form u of x, y plus iota v of x, y and we converted it into a function f of z. Of course, it is the same function but the form is now different. Now, the form of the function involves only z and z conjugate. Now, uh, there is a very special kind of function where uh, the imaginary part in u plus iota v is 0. Of course, if the imaginary part is 0, uh, then the output is a real number. So, one such example of such function is uh, where we calculate modulus of these complex numbers. So, in other words, the function is given as f of z is equal to modulus of z or the absolute value of z. So, it is one of the important functions uh, in our further discussions. Now, we know that a complex number can be written in the Cartesian form x plus iota y and it can also be written in polar form and in particular, it can be written as r into e raised to power iota theta where theta is the argument and r is the modulus. Now, if we have this form of the complex number, then what will be its effect on the form of complex valued function? Now, if we are given a complex valued function, w is equal to f of z, then replacing z is equal to r e raised to power iota theta. So, this gives us u of r theta plus iota v of r theta. Of course, uh, the output of uh, this complex valued function is a complex number. Now, this time our u and v does not depend on, of course, x and y. They depend on r and theta because the input is in the form of r and theta. And as you vary uh, the values of r and theta, the output will be varying. So, in other words, in this case, u and v are functions of r and theta. Now, let's have a look at some example. So, if f of z is equal to z square, now can we uh, convert using the polar form of complex number, can we convert this function into u of r theta plus iota v of r theta? Of course, in this case, uh, the answer is very simple because uh, you just replace z is equal to r e raised to power iota theta in the value of f of z. So, in other words, if f of z is equal to z square, then just replace z is equal to r e raised to power iota theta here. So, it becomes r e raised to power iota theta is equal to r e raised to power iota theta square and this becomes r square and e raised to power iota 2 theta. Now, we can expand this thing because we want to know what are the real and imaginary parts of this complex function. So, we want to expand this e raised to power iota 2 theta. So, it becomes cosine 2 theta plus iota sine 2 theta. So, multiplying this r square, r square cosine 2 theta. Now, this is the real part of this complex valued function plus iota r square sine 2 theta. And this is the imaginary part of this function. So, we have this u and we have this v. So, what is the value of u? r square cosine 2 theta and what is the value of e? r square sine 2 theta. Now, using polar form of complex number, we have uh, calculated what are the real and imaginary parts of a complex valued function. Now, if we are given a complex valued function, we want to know uh, using Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates 
what are the real and imaginary parts of this complex valued function. Now, first consider uh, this function f of z is equal to z square plus z plus 1. Now, we want to calculate both uh, real and imaginary parts using the Cartesian coordinates and the polar coordinates. Now, let's first calculate uh, in the case of Cartesian coordinates. So, of course, in this case, we replace z is equal to x plus iota y. So, just replace the value of z is equal to x plus iota y in here. So, we get x plus iota y square plus x plus iota y plus 1. Now, expanding this square, we get the following expression plus x plus iota y plus 1. Now, we can uh, uh, collect the real numbers and imaginary numbers. In other words, in numbers which are multiples iota separately. So, this becomes the real part and this becomes the imaginary part. So, in other words, our u is equal to x square minus y square plus x plus 1 and our imaginary part of the function v of x, y is 2xy plus y. Now, let's calculate um, in the case of polar coordinates. So, in this case, of course, we are going to use the following form z is equal to r e raised to the power iota theta. So, replace this value of z in f of z. Okay, so, in other words, f of z is equal to f of r e raised to the power iota theta. So, in other words, this becomes r e raised to the power iota theta square plus r e raised to the power iota theta plus 1. So, in other words, we have this form. Now, expanding this thing, we get this thing. Now, when we take square of e raised to the power iota theta, we get e raised to the power iota 2 theta. Now, expand that and we will get cosine 2 theta plus sine 2 theta and then multiplying them with r square, we get this form. And similarly, we can expand r e raised to the power iota theta plus 1. Now, uh, collecting the real and imaginary numbers separately. So, this is the real part and this is the imaginary part. Okay, so, in this case, uh, u of r theta is r square cosine 2 theta plus r cosine theta plus 1. And v of r theta is equal to r square sine 2 theta plus r sine theta. Now, in this example, uh, we have considered the same function and we calculated uh, u and v in the case of Cartesian coordinates and in the case of polar coordinates. And we have observed that the same function have different u and v's in the case of Cartesian and polar coordinates. So, here is the value of u and v in the case of Cartesian coordinates and here are u and v in the case of polar coordinates. So, the, remember the function is the same but if we change the coordinates from Cartesian to polar, the real and imaginary components of the function will be changed. Now, let's consider some very special complex valued functions which are going to be part of our uh, further discussions in complex analysis. So, one of the famous uh, example of such functions is polynomial function. So, what is a polynomial function? A polynomial function is an expression of the form a0 plus a1z up to so on, an minus 1 z raised to power n minus 1 plus an z raised to power n, where z is basically uh, variable uh, and its values are coming from the domain of this polynomial and these ai's, the coefficients of this uh, polynomial are complex numbers. Of course, the domain of this uh, polynomial function is the whole complex plane. In other words, uh, we can evaluate a polynomial on any complex number from the complex plane. Now, this an is the leading coefficient and this n, which is the highest power in a polynomial is the degree of the polynomial, which in this case is n. Now, let's have a look at some special polynomials. So, one of the special polynomials is linear polynomials. In other words, when the polynomial has degree n is equal to 1. Now, these are called linear polynomials because the degree of z in this case is 1. And, of course, the coefficients are complex numbers. Now, these polynomials have very interesting geometrical properties which we will see in our further discussions.
another example so 1 plus z plus z square of course we can see that uh, the coefficients are complex number and the variable is z and so it is a polynomial function now let's have a look at another example where we have 1 plus z plus z square plus z cube plus z is power 4 up to so on so it's an ongoing process and this function is not a polynomial why it is not a polynomial because polynomial is always finite sum of terms now in this case uh, the terms are not finite and it's an ongoing process so it is not a polynomial in fact it is a series now let's have a look at another example where we have f of z is equal to 1 over z or in other words we can say that this is z raised to power minus 1 now also there is another condition on the polynomials that the powers are always non-negative so in this case the power of z is negative so that's why it is not a polynomial function but it's a it's another kind of function 1 over z it's rational function so what are rational functions so rational functions are basically quotient of polynomials p of z over q of z where p and q are polynomials so they, they are polynomials uh, possibly of different degrees now one of the special type of uh, rational functions are linear fractional transformations where uh, the numerator is a linear function and the denominator is also a linear polynomial now in this case we impose some further conditions ad minus bc uh, so that it has its inverses and we will see these kind of uh, transformations or functions uh, in our further discussions once again these uh, functions have very interesting geometrical properties now sometimes uh, we are given an expression which is not a function by definition of the function but we can construct uh, many functions from this expression and of course we can use those functions to discuss the property of that given expression for example if we are given f of z is equal to z raised to power 1 by 2 now we know that if we are calculating a square root of z uh, then uh, we are going to have two answers so in other words we can say that if the input if i let's say take input to be 1 plus iota then the output is not going to be unique i'm going to get two different answers okay so the first root of 1 plus iota and then we have second root of 1 plus iota so if we if we say that this expression is a function then what will be the problem so the problem is input is a complex number but the output is not unique so unique means it should be exactly one output and in this case we can see that input is a complex number but the output is not a unique complex number so there are two complex numbers as an output so that's why this expression is not a function but we can construct two different functions from this uh, expression so one of them is uh, the positive root and the second one is the negative root and of course uh, if we are taking positive roots then of course the answer is going to be uh, unique and uh, if we are considering uh, roots with the negative sign then the answer is always going to be unique so these two f1 and f2 takes inputs as complex number and give us unique outputs so that's why this f1 and f2 are complex valued functions now these kind of uh, multi-valued functions appear many times in complex analysis so uh, one of the trick to deal with such functions is uh, uh, dividing them into many functions now in this part uh, we studied how to write down complex valued function into real and imaginary parts we also discussed some particular complex valued function for example what are polynomials what are rational functions and we also saw what are multi-valued functions.